You know, most people are shocked when they find out how bad of an electrician I am. Thank you. I had a job as a lumberjack, but I couldn't hack it, so they gave me the axe. No? Should have stopped under the first one. Hey, so we're continuing this series, and we're looking at what our purpose is in life. We've been trying to figure out what we're here for, what our calling is, what we were made to do. And last week, we talked a little bit about how you were called first and foremost to allow God to love you. We were called to be his sons. We were called to be his daughters. And today what we're going to look at is how you were called to belong. Like God never intended for you to go through your life alone. So the second purpose of your life is that God has formed you for his family. He has formed you for his family. Ephesians 1.5 says his unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. See, God's family is called his church. 1 Timothy 3, 14 through 15 says, I'm writing to you so you will know how to live in the family of God. That family is the church of the living God, the support and foundation of his truth. So you were made for his family, and it's called the church. You and I were called to belong to his church. Ephesians 2, 19 says, now, So now you... So now you are no longer visitors or strangers. Now you are citizens together with God's holy people. You belong to God's family. And Romans 1.16 goes on and says, You are among those who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. This word that we translate church is the, is the word ekklesia. And it comes from the, the word kaleo, which means to be called. So the word ecclesia just literally means the called out ones. And most of us, when we think of the word church, we think of a building. We think of an event. But the church is a group that you belong to. It's a relationship. It's a covenant. It's a connection. It's association. And this morning, I want to show you the benefits of belonging to a church. And the Bible has five different metaphors of a church. It talks about the church as a family, as a temple, as a body, as a flock, as in a garden. And the, and the first of those metaphors is a family. See, God doesn't want us to be orphans. He wants us to be a part of of something. He wants us to be a part of a healthy family. And the first thing that you need to know is in God's family, you can learn your true identity. Think about this for a second. Have you ever wondered why we wear or buy name brand things? Like, why do we go and, and buy mugs that say Starbucks on them? Why do we go out and buy nice clothes that have a nice designer label on them? Because we want to identify. We want to be a part of a group. We want people to see us and know that we're a part of something. But really, in reality, most of us, our identity comes from our relationships. You are known for the relationships that you have. You're known as a son, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a friend, a daughter, a teammate, a mother, a pastor. For most of us, if, if our identity is broken, if our connections are bad with these people, with the relationships they're in, our identity suffers from that. That's why after we go through divorce, we say, well, who am I now? That's why after we're fired, we say, I mean, what, what am I? Some of us will say, well, you know, my, my, my family was dysfunctional. 
You know, I grew up in a, in a horrible family. They were broken. It was non-existent. How do I, how do I know who I'm supposed to be? Well, the good news is Ephesians 2.19 says you are members of God's very own family. And you belong in God's household with every other Christian. And what we realize from the Bible, from the Word, is that this family, your church family, is more important. And what I realize is that's hard for some of us to grasp. For some of us, our connections with our family are so deep and they're so pure that it's hard for us to understand that our church family is supposed to be a stronger bond than our our immediate family. But the Bible tells us that this family will last forever. That when you become part of a family, when you become part of God's family, it will last forever. See, our physical, or our physical family, our family here on earth, it was just a means to get us to be a part of a spiritual family. It was a means for us to be able to get to a body of believers and become part of God's family. See, when the world talks about people, they use superficial identities or identifiers, right? They talk about you, you're short, you're tall, you've got black hair. And and they use these superficial things to describe us. But what the Bible says is what matters most is your spiritual identity. Not the outward things, but your spiritual identity. Hebrews 2.11 says, Jesus and the people he makes holy all belong to the same family. That is why he isn't ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. I'm sure some of us here have brothers and sisters that we're ashamed of, and you shouldn't raise your hand or look at them if they're here this morning. But Jesus isn't ashamed of us no matter what. There is nothing that you could do to make him ashamed to call you his brother or his sister. We live in a day and an age where when you get on Facebook, you can scroll through and every once in a while they'll, they'll have these ads that pop up and it'll have your last name on it and you can buy these shirts and they want you to identify with who you are because that's the world that we live in. We identify, we show what family that we belong to. And do you know what the identifying mark of belonging to God's family is? We saw it last week. As Harley came and he showed that he was part of God's family through baptism. That's our identifying mark. Acts 2.41 says, Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church. About 3,000. So the second metaphor of the church is, is a temple like a building erected for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Don't you realize that all of you, gather, or all of you together are the temple of God and His Spirit lives in you? How many of you have ever been on a construction site? Any of you? Good job, Mike. You've been on a construction site, right? And you walk around and things are being built. And there's extra parts laying everywhere. And if you were to ask the contractor, what's that for? They would tell you it's just an extra part. It doesn't actually fit in. It's just some extra pieces they had laying around. And it's actually in the building. But it's not a part of it. And there's some of us here this morning that that's what happens to us. We come and we're extra parts just lying around, but we're not actually part of the building. We're not an actual part of the church. We're just laying around and we're the extra pieces. No real job. We're just here. 
But you need to know the second benefit to being part of God's family is in God's temple, you're supported by others. Think about this for a moment. When you have a strong building structure, you hold each other up. Ephesians 2, 21 through 22 says, In Christ the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Think about it for a moment. If you were to start building a house and you were to just start stacking lumber up on top of each other and hope that it held together, it would all fall apart. It's important that it's connected. It's important that it's all driven together, that it's all one huge connected piece or it will all collapse. And none of us were created to go through life unsupported. None of us were created to do this alone. Think about this for a minute. Legos have one purpose, right? Legos are created to be connected together. And when you put them together, you can build some pretty cool things. But when they're disconnected, all they are good for is hurting your feet. Romans 1.12 says, I want us to help each other with the faith we have. Your faith will help me, and my faith will help you. That's community. That's what we're designed for. The third metaphor of the church is a body. We're different parts, but we're all connected, complete each other, and function as a whole. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. And the third benefit to being a part of the body this morning is in Christ's body, I discover my unique value. In Christ's body, you discover your unique value. Romans 12, 4 and 5 says, Just as there are many parts to our bodies, so it is with Christ's body. We are all parts of it. And it takes every one of us to make it complete. For we have different work to do, so we belong to each other. And each of us needs all the others. So we're all apart. We're all different. We're all unique. God designed us to be different. God designed us to be unique. He designed us in that way designed you to be different from all the people around you. You might think that that's a bad thing, but that's the way that God designed you. And if we're going to complete the body, then all of us have to come together. We're all needed to make the body complete. And what that means is we each have a role to do. And for some of us, that's hard to fathom. For some of you, you don't think you have a role. You think that's past you in your life. You think you've done everything that you needed to do. You think it's all behind you. You've done all your work. You're just waiting for Jesus to come and to take you home. But if you're still living, God still has purpose. There's some of you, you think, man, I'm just too busy. My life has too much going on. I can't draw in. But God wants you to know that what goes on here and the way that this body works in the community is more important than anything that we could do. In the scripture, it tells us that we, we belong to each other. Your faith, my faith, it all works together because we're part of the same body. And what that means is that we need each other. Like if one of you is the eyeball and you're detached and you're not part, then we're not seeing very well. 
and you're a beautiful part of the body, but if you're not connected, it's not helping us very much. And what you need to realize is that you cannot fulfill God's promises for your life by yourself. 1 Corinthians 12, 15, and 16 says, if your foot says I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, that doesn't make it any less part of the body. And if your ear says I'm not part of the body because I'm an ear and not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? Every part is important. But that's what we like to do. We like to say, well, you know, I don't have as important of a job as you, so you really don't need me. You're the one that's supposed to be doing all the work. I can do this little bit, and you don't need me for anything. But what we find is that every part is important, that God designed you for your role in the body, and it's what makes this body work. We should never confuse prominence with significance. Because every piece is important. Ephesians 4.25 says, In Christ's body we're all connected to each other. A disconnected body part dies. The fourth metaphor of the church this morning is a flock. Like a group of sheep banded together for safety. Psalm 103 says, God made us. And we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Now, that doesn't sound too appealing. It doesn't sound too appealing to be his sheep, but what we don't realize is how intensely sheep were cared for. How the shepherd would make sure they always had everything that they needed. They always had the food they needed. They were always protected. They always had the water they needed. And the th fourth thing that you need to realize this morning is that in God's flock, you're protected and you're cared for. And what that means is you're not on your own. It means you have others looking out for you. It means that you can enjoy safety and security. It means that you can be more confident. You can be less anxious. Because there are other people that are there holding you up. That means when you're getting beat up in the business world, that you can be confident in knowing that God still has you. When your marriage is being strained, you can know that there are people standing beside you and they're holding you up and they're holding your marriage together and they're trying to help you. You need people in your life who will step up to bat for you. You need people in your life who will walk in into your life when everyone else is walking out. And in every church, God has placed two different kinds of people who care for you. And the first are your pastors who look out for you, your shepherd. 1 Peter 5, 2 says, take care of God's flock, his people that you are responsible for. Watch over them because you want to, not because you're forced to do it. This is what pastors, all the people on staff here feel for you. They feel for your kids. We just want to watch out for you. Hebrews 13, 7 says, Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and know they are accountable to God. I tell you, it's a, it's a tough truth to believe. There's so many times when people come in for counseling and they think that what we're doing is trying to beat them down and to belittle them. When as a shepherd, all you want is for their life to be better, to feel the fullness of God's love and his mercy. And the second type of people in the church is, is your small group. I don't know if you've gotten this yet, but you need to be involved in a small group. You need to be a part of people who are looking out for you. Over 58 times in the Bible, 
God, the Bible says, one another, one another, one another. Galatians 6, 2 says, share each other's troubles and problems. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 11 says, encourage each other and give each other strength. So my question is, who's looking out for you? What group have you dove into and allowed other people to speak truth into your life? What group are you allowing to stand behind you, to encourage you, to give you Advice when you need it. And the truth is, is that God will use every one of your hurts, every one of your mistakes, every one of your sins to help others. That's why your testimony, the things that God has done in your life are so important. Because there are other people that are going through the exact same thing. There are things that you have done, things that you have been through, things that God has brought you through in your life, maybe years ago, that people now are trying to figure out how to deal with. And we don't have the time on Sunday mornings to sit around and to pour our hearts out and get ask for advice and ask for help. And that's why small groups are so important, because you can sit down in someone's home you can begin to nurture one another. You can open your heart and not just share your hurts, but share your triumphs that God has given you. The fifth metaphor of the church, he says the the church is a garden or a vineyard. And it shows how we grow and become fruitful John 15, 1, and then verse 5 says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener, and you are the branches. See, in God's garden, your life becomes productive. You're able to make contribution that God intends you to make with your life. John 15, 4, and 5 says, A branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful apart from me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. See, the point is is that a disconnected branch, you you can't bear fruit. If you cut a limb off an apple tree, it's not going to produce fruit. It's going to shrivel up. It's going to eventually die. But if it's connected, if you are connected, you'll have this life-giving energy that's flowing through you. So the question is, why, why should you remain disconnected when a church family like this has so much to offer why should you be disconnected if you're here this morning and you're not connected and you attend but you're you're not a member many of you might might not feel like you live close enough or you don't feel like you have enough time to come and be a part of the family or maybe your family lives really far away we can be your family This is some of the most loving, caring, nurturing people I've ever met in my life. And we will be your family. Maybe all of your life you've been trying to belong. And your whole life you felt like, you know what, I don't don't belong anywhere. I don't fit in anywhere. I don't have anybody to go to. And what you need to realize is you are wanted here. We want you as part of our family. You belong here. So how do you become a part of this family? 
First and foremost, you give your life to Jesus and you profess him as your personal Lord and Savior. Secondly, you come and you be baptized in the water and we immerse you. If you're not a part of this family, I want you to become a part of this family if the worship team would come. On October 27th, here in a few weeks, we're going to have a membership Sunday. For those of you that have wanted to move your membership in, if your membership isn't here, if it's elsewhere, and you want to say, you know what? I belong here. At the end of service on October 27th, we're going to invite and we're going to come together and we're going to welcome in new members. Maybe you've been attending here for a really long time, but you've never become a member. Today, that day, October 27th is the day that you come forward and you join us. And you say, hey, I want to be a part of this mission. I want to go where you're going. I want to make Jesus known, not only in Williamstown, but in all of Grant County. I want to be a part of that. That's the day. And maybe those of you that are already members, what you need to do is you need to fall in love with the church all over again. What you need to realize is that the church is the hope of the world. The church is the hope that this world needs. It's the only thing on this earth that will last. But we are all called to belong. We are all called to belong to Jesus' family. And for some of us, we've just been apart laying around on the ground for a really long time. And what we need, what the church needs, not me, not just the staff, what the church needs is for you to put yourself in the place where God has put you to be. If we're going to be able to do what God has called us to do as a church, we need all of our parts and all of our pieces working together in the way that God intended. So we need you to pick yourself up off the floor and dust yourself off and realize that you still have purpose. Will you stand with me this morning? I talked a few moments ago about what it means and what you have to do to become a member of this family, to become a member and belong in God's family. And the first thing I said is you have to be able to give your life over and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you're here this morning and you've never done that, I want to give you the opportunity to come and give Jesus your entire life. profess him as your personal Lord and Savior and lay down your life for an exchange for his. It's the first step. So I'm going to pray and they're going to begin to play. And if you're here this morning and you need prayer for anything, I would love to pray for you. There will be a prayer team that's to my right that would love to pray with you this morning. That's what the body is meant for. To belong to the body is so that we can hold each other up. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today.
Father, I thank you that Father, I thank you that you've called us to be a part of your family. Father, this morning, I just pray for those of us that, that have just been lying around and waiting on your return. Father, I pray that this morning you would speak to our hearts and you would help us to know the place you would like us to be. And more importantly, Father, you'd help us to get back up into that place. Lord Jesus, this morning we just declare our love for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come as the Lord leads you this morning.